Okay, Unit 4, Supplemental Lecture 1, a quick review of Jefferson and Manifest Destiny. So we're going to move quick here, okay? Um, I want to look at Jefferson and the election of 1800 and Jefferson's political beliefs. So in, elect in the election of 1800, nobody wins the Electoral College, um, the majority, over 50% of it. Um, so when this happens, according to the Constitution, the election goes to the House of Representatives, which had, at this point, changed hands. I mean... <clears throat> the unpopular policies of the Federalists had caused them to lose the elections in 1798, giving the Democratic Republicans control of the House of Representatives, and thereby allowing Jefferson to become president. Though it wasn't quite that easy because Aaron Burr had tied him. They both had 73 electoral votes. So Hamilton will throw his support behind Jefferson. Bring it up in class. Hopefully we'll talk about it. Because um, it's important. Eventually you, you should know Aaron Burr um, kills Hamilton. Okay, um, so we call this the Revolution of 1800 because we have a peaceful transfer of power, all right? The party in power actually steps down and lets another party assume power, all right? Doesn't really happen very often at all, okay? So this is good. So then the Democratic Republicans will become um, the power in party for the next 20 years. Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, all Democratic Republicans, okay? And um, uh, this shows our system can work, very important. So some things to remember about Jefferson. Um, before he was president, he's the father of the Democratic Republican Party. Um, he's a strict constructionist, meaning the government can only do what the Constitution explicitly says it can. He um, believes in a laissez-faire approach to the economy, meaning the government keeps a hands-off uh, approach to the economy. He wants an agriculturally based economy, <clears throat> okay, and most of his supporters are in the South. Now, when he becomes president, things are going to change a little bit for Jefferson, okay? He purchases Louisiana from France. <clears throat> okay, uh, he's approached by agents of Napoleon. Um, we offered some money for New Orleans. They said, I think, 10 million, and Napoleon said, Give me 15, I'll give you the whole thing. So we take it. It's a great, um, great deal, though nowhere in the Constitution does the president have this power. He's also going to push through the Embargo Act, which stops trade between the U.S. and all foreign nations. This is a response to British impressment of our sailors. Impressment, you should remember, as a cause of the War of 1812, and this is when they pull over our ships at sea and kidnap our sailors. The embargo acts a complete, complete disaster. Um, nobody likes it. So we can see when when Jefferson becomes president, um, <clears throat> he adopts a much looser interpretation of the Constitution, and he realizes sometimes that you can't hold two principles so much. And his actions as president actually go to further strengthen the federal government. Okay, and his most important achievement as president, without a doubt, is Louisiana Purchase. This has three major effects on the U.S. One, it nearly doubles the size of the United States, giving us the Great Plains over there, which um, is going to be really, really important with its fertile soil and feeding our ever-growing population. Okay? Second, it will give us complete control of the Mississippi, which acts as a very important highway, getting goods and people up and down <clears throat> throughout the West. Okay? And third, it's the first step, or one of our first steps in begin the beginning of fulfillment of our manifest destiny. Manifest destiny, the idea that God wants us to occupy the whole continent. All right, here's a map for that. <clears throat> now I want to go through this really, really quick. Manifest destiny starts with our freedom, okay? We have 13 states. <clears throat> our border with the Treaty of Paris that ends the Revolution War extends to Mississippi, okay? Then we have the Northwest Ordinance, which is going to define and establish how a state uh, territory becomes a state. Then we get the Louisiana Purchase, which extends our border all the way to the Rocky Mountains. It'll be explored by Lewis and Clark, guided by Sacagawea. <clears throat> okay. Then will come the annexation of Texas. Okay. Um, Texas is part of Mexico. It's a very sparsely um, populated place. Um, the Mexicans are happy to have some people come in, and the Americans are happy to go get the land. So they move in, a bunch of Southern Americans, uh, with the understanding <clears throat> and agreement from the, the Mexican government that they will become Catholics and the do not bring slaves. There's no slavery in Mexico. The Americans ignore this. They revolt. Eventually, they win their independence. Remember the Alamo. <clears throat> and then they ask us to annex them, and eventually we will in about 10 years. I think God uh, takes for us to annex Texas and this part of the country. This understandably upsets the Mexicans, who place troops on that southern border. We accuse them of shooting at us. We go to war, the Mexican War. Um, we defeat Mexico, and we take the Mexican session. Okay? which is Cancun, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, um, California, Utah, and Nevada. Okay, remember that. Okay, so we get a ton of land there. We take this huge area all, all the way from Mexico. And then a treaty with Britain will establish our northern border. That's Manifest Destiny quickly. Remember, Jefferson, Manifest Destiny, Supplemental.